to the wild west of combating COVID-19. Colorado's statewide stay home order lifts Sunday and counties are gonna scramble out in all different directions. I'll talk one-on-one -on -one with the governor who says, this is not a confusing mess. And Denver's mayor who tells me he hoped to lock down longer but struck a deal. Coloradans concerned about the risks of going back to work early have to consider, can you afford to not do that? Some businesses barely got open before they had to close. So now what? And I don't care if we have to turn over every rock in town to find your good news. We'll do it because this is next. Colorado's constitution gives local communities great power even in a pandemic. Home rule, local control, is about to get tested in a new way by a novel virus. Colorado's statewide stay-home order lifts on Sunday, and counties are scattering in all directions. Denver is going to lead a coalition of metro area communities in staying home longer. Eagle and Mesa uh, counties are asking for and getting permission to loosen the rules. Where in Weld County, home of secessionist talk for more than a decade, Leaders there are telling the governor that he can't tell them what to do and they'll let any business open on Monday. My conversations with Denver's mayor and Colorado's governor in just a moment. But first, we go to prison. Sterling Correctional Facility has reported a sudden spike in COVID-19 cases from 8 on Wednesday to 138 today. And there are hundreds of tests still pending. They found coronavirus because they tested for coronavirus. They tested on a wide scale and poof, there it is. Governor Polis told me he doesn't think they need to move inmates out of Sterling because he says they can effectively isolate them while there. And he says that most of those inmates that have COVID-19, just like people in general population, will recover completely. I asked the governor today as he was working from home in Boulder whether it is fair to assume that COVID-19 has spread through Colorado's other prisons, but we just haven't seen it because we haven't tested for it there. Um, no, the answer is no, because we did take early steps to try to reduce the transfers during this period. So it got in, no surprise, to many facilities. But I, I, don't, I, I, don't, I wouldn't say it's every jail or prison in the state. There's some that likely have been able to successfully keep it out. The governor is promising to use every mechanism within his power to stop Weld County from becoming a free-for-all on Monday. But it does not appear that the Democratic governor has very many mechanisms to stop the Republican county commissioners from turning things loose up there. So the governor told me today that what they're focused on is threatening the business licenses of any business that chooses to reopen against state public health orders. If you are illegally operating, yes, you're risking your own license if you are illegally operating, meaning you might lose your ability to run that business legally in the future if you're operating illegally, uh, just like if you had been in the past few weeks during the stay-at-home order. For businesses that have been operating Ill illegally, they are absolutely risking their license to operate, in addition to risking closure orders uh, through the county health departments. Do you have another mechanism that you're prepared to use between now and Monday that you just don't want to talk about? Because right now, when I hear those things, it sounds like, well, each individual business owner can take their own chances and Weld County can go rogue. I think that's a very powerful tool that, that we have because for businesses that are regulated, uh, the difference that a business owner makes and, oh, I'll wait three or four more days or a week longer versus risk my entire business uh, for years is, is a very serious um, um, uh, impact from, from those decisions that they make. Uh, having a, a completely uh, a set of guides that completely lacks any grounding in data and science and is more of a talking point than a health policy uh, is a danger to the people of Colorado, and I will prevent it. So your decision to lift the statewide stay-home order has led to the situation that some of your own supporters feared that we're going to end up with a confusing mix of guidelines that impact Coloradans differently based on where they, they live, work, and play. Have you given any consideration to the idea of keeping the statewide order in place at least until some guidance is developed? Well, some might call it confusing. Others would call it appropriate based on the fact that we have counties that have no one with the virus. We have other counties where it continues to grow at a very dangerous trajectory 
outweighing their capacity to deliver health care services. So uh, I think we found the right way to handle it. You can see my full unedited conversation with the governor on the next YouTube channel where I ask him whether the conservative reopened Colorado rally at the state capitol put any pressure on his decision to lift that statewide stay home order. Weld County is not ordering businesses to open. It's just saying that any business can open up there. The stuff that is still ordered to be closed elsewhere in the state, like bars and restaurants. Republican Commissioner Barbara Kirkmeyer told us today that since the governor is acknowledging that he's relying on local authorities to enforce his orders, Weld County is just going to step aside and let individuals make the public health decision for themselves. So let's do what we can to encourage people to stop living in fear, start living in faith, and start following, you know, let's keep following these expectations of the physical distancing of six feet or more. You know, if you're sick, don't go to work. If you're sick, don't leave your home. So let's look around the metro area. You've got Denver, Jeffco, Boulder County, all extending stay home orders, Adams and Arapaho as well. But the third county in Tri-County Health, Douglas County, is going to reopen on schedule. You'll recall that's the county where last month Republican leaders threatened to fire their own public health officials for recommending a stay-home order. Denver Mayor Michael Hancock told me today that he actually thought that May 15th would have been the better date to extend the stay-home order to, but he decided to compromise with other regional leaders. That's where we started our conversation. But when I got on the phone with regional partners, um, it was pretty well established that May 8th was more of the, the, the date that they were landing on. Changes are, doesn't change much about what we're doing, but certainly doesn't give us as much of a landing strip, but that's okay. We'll, we'll focus on getting ready for uh, May, getting ready through May 8th, and of course, uh, ready to go live on May the 9th. Denver has offered the specific goal of 1,000 tests per day. The danger in offering specifics, as you know, is that people might hold you to them. Uh, should people be watching that daily test number to see if it gets to 1,000, and then that will determine whether or not we lift on May 8th? Yeah, you can look at that number, but rest and assure that we knew before we made that statement that the, that capacity already exists in our community. There's a strain of criticism from your right that suggests that Democrats like you just want control and that this is some kind of dream scenario, that you're enjoying this. Wow. You know, I'll tell you, I'll tell you this. Um, there aren't very many families that have gone on impacted by the coronavirus. And when I hear those kind of scenarios, um, they don't imagine that the same people that, uh, that are being impacted by my decisions also live in my home. Um, family members who are out of work. Uh, family members who are struggling, um, you know, siblings who are trying to feed their children as well. Uh, I carry those burdens with me every day. So it is loony to believe that we find pleasure in control or making these decisions. Nobody wants to be in this place. That's why very few people are in these spaces uh, to make these calls. And our families have been just as impacted as everyone else's family in the community is. My full unedited conversation with the mayor, interrupted by an unfortunate technical issue on my end, is on the next YouTube page. So we know that there are a lot of Coloradans who are raring to get back to work Monday or whenever they're allowed to do so. We also know that there are a lot of Coloradans who are concerned that there is no way to safely do the social distancing required in their workplaces. Our Anusha Roy looks at a situation that is highly individualized to specific employees and specific businesses. It's pretty clear when neighboring businesses have different opening days posted, different counties are allowing different rules, there's a lot of confusion around the state. I want to be safe, so I'm not going to like suddenly go back to our normal hours and have a full staff here and hope that will come down here. Julie Nygaard, the founder of The Chocolate Therapist, isn't the only one navigating this ever-evolving situation. Today, the governor gave us some clarity about people worrying about going back to work. Come May 4th in certain counties, allowing workplaces to open, they can allow up to half their office to return. 50% who are telecommuting are not going in. That should be prioritized or those who have pre-existing condition and older Coloradans that are still in the work. Then he talked about keeping perspective. Thinking about what risks you want to take on yourself, you have to balance that 
with, you know, can I afford not to make a living for six months? And some people can. Maybe you're 68 and you get some Social Security and have a small pension, but you work because you want to have additional money, but maybe you can forgo it for six months. If you can, that's a very, very, very good decision, right? A very good decision to keep yourself safe. But there are others that have to put food on the table for the family and make their rent and need to work. And we wanted more opportunities to do that in as safe a way as possible. It's that second group Tammy Dorr with the Downtown Denver Association is the most worried about and said businesses are currently working on best practices. To set up both a safe environment and an environment that is also perceived to be safe and felt to be safe. And if you don't feel safe, talk to your employer, report your concerns to your health department, even the attorney general. 100% certain. Nobody has all of the answers and it's going to continue to change. So some people are actually bringing in more money through unemployment and unemployment assistance. So when they're asked to go back to work, they're saying, no, that doesn't make any financial sense. So the Department of Labor said that they actually take a look if the person has a legitimate reason to turn down a job while on unemployment. That could include health reasons, safety concerns. If they decide that's not the case, you could actually end up losing out on those benefits. But Kyle, it is up to the employees and the employers to let the state know that this is going on. I can imagine there'd be some employers, Anusha, that know their employees, feel for them, and wouldn't want to call into the state and say, this person's refusing to come back. Yeah, there was a business owner I talked to today who said, you know, the whole situation is kind of awkward, right? You don't want to rat someone out. But it's also very complicated because some of these businesses have gotten those federal loans, right, where they're being told you have to bring your employees back. So now they're trying to work the numbers to make it all work and meet those loan requirements as well. Anusha, thank you very much. We told you that Colorado's reported number of COVID-19 deaths was going to spike because they're going back and reclassifying old deaths that were put into the system as something else. Sure enough, 120 death increase factored into today's total brings Colorado's number to 674. Almost 900 people are still in the hospital. 72 got to go home in the last day. Colorado has had 12,000 confirmed cases after testing 56,000 people. Colorado's top law enforcement officer, the attorney general, is cracking down on what they say are bogus home tests for COVID-19. Cease and desist letters went out to three different businesses, Redtail Wellness in Boulder, Zvio Weight Loss and Med Spa in Lakewood, and Functional Medical Center in Fort Collins. The AG's office says all three of them were advertising and selling supposed antibody home test kits. Often they can be told, oh, this is a good test. Yeah. But of course, the person selling it knows it's not a legitimate test. They will say things like, it's been FDA, FDA approved. It's not been approved by the FDA. They just know that you're vulnerable and you're desperate to get some form of feedback and you'll be willing to believe even someone who's got no basis to help you. Yeah. The AG's office suggests that a better idea is to get medical advice from a doctor rather than Facebook. Uh, we reached out to all three businesses today. The only one to get back to us was Functional Medical Center. They said the issue was actually incorrect wording on an online advertisement, and they say that they have corrected it. When next returns, we check in with three small business owners. They chased their dream and opened a business, and then just days later, the state closed. I doubt many businesses wrote into the contingency plan what they would do in case of global pandemic. Our Marshall Zellinger found three new small business owners taking different approaches when they went from grand opening to suddenly not so grand. When you open a critical business during a stay at home order, you need a lot of signs. We have all kinds of great advertising out to just let people know we're open. Give me a quick wave so people can see where they're talking to. Uh, Hello. Michelle Wiley just opened a Ziggy's Coffee in Castle Pines on Tuesday. drive through only, apparently for anything with wheels. We were able to provide work for about 12 staff members, actually a couple more. To get people to know us, this is very difficult. Atta Woot opened Ross Siam, his Thai restaurant near Jefferson Park, one week before the state stopped dine-in service. We opened on the Monday night of March, and then... Uh, the city is shutting down on the Tuesday 
speak of the death. Hard to get loyal customers when they haven't even had a chance to come by. We have not prepared for takeout from the beginning. We only prepare for dining in. We get a very good support from the neighborhood. We feel very grateful. I'm Brandon Spano. I'm the co-founder and CEO of DNVR. DNVR was supposed to be a sports bar to go along with DNVR's online sports talk. But Friday the 13th in March was unlucky. We opened the bar on Friday for the state closed on Monday. Unlike the coffee shop and the Thai restaurant, DNVR is C-L-O-S-E-D. For us, we didn't want to go out and try to do delivery and a bunch of things. We just figured it was the best way to kind of close it down and just hold on tight until everything was over. When is everything over? As you heard earlier and next, it depends on where you live. We know through this weekend, though, all brick and mortar food service will remain mobile. We're just hoping to put a smile on their face. Those were just three examples of businesses navigating through something no one ever thought they'd have to navigate through, and I'm sure you know a few businesses doing the same. What's going to happen next for each of those businesses will be different. The coffee shop, Kyle, is in Douglas County, which is going to transition to that safer at home method that the state's using starting Monday, while the other two businesses in Denver will be at the stay at home for a little bit longer. Nothing changes safer at home with the restaurants, but perhaps the one in Douglas County may progress faster than the other two. And of course, Marshall, in the end, it all comes down to when do people feel comfortable in these places, not when are they allowed back. Right. And from what I've seen, at least through the drive through the coffee shop and the drive up right now at the Thai restaurant, people are still comfortable doing that. I don't know even if the doors open, what people will do after that. Oh, I'm looking forward to the day we can get back into a sports bar. All right. Thank you, Marshall. I can't be the only one who feels more connected to my neighbors right now. Even if we're alone in our homes, we are all still together. A community that stopped throwing stones. They're painting them now. That's next. Walk the Sulphur Gulch Trail in Parker and you'll see something that catches your eye. Small signs that neighbors there are staying connected. Our Corky Shoal grabbed his camera and headed there to capture this Friday's good news. We're all in this together, write your name on a rock. Hi, my name is Stephanie, and my good news is that um, our community has come together in our neighborhood um, and done this rock pile. Um, everyone's added their names, walking by on the trail, just to create a sense of togetherness and just a sense of community during this time where we're all feeling kind of isolated. There's a dog one. Oh, that one's a kitty. The cat. The cat. We started this probably one of the first weeks after the quarantine started. And we thought it'd be cool to do the, you know, grab a rock and write your name. And of course, we put a bottle of sanitizer so it would be safe. So we started with this one, and then we added this one, and then we added the third one. This is such a unique time in history, I think, for all of us. And just kind of being stuck in your house is not easy. I mean, not to mention the people who are sick right now. So I think just feeling like we're not alone in this and that, you know, at some point we will all come back together and um, things will be better. I think I think keeping hope alive is very important right now. For us, and I think for some of the people in our neighborhood, it's become, you know, like a really neat sense of community. Um, I think, you know, we actually had a couple ladies walk by and say, you know, they were feeling pretty down and it was neat for them. They come by every day to watch it grow, to kind of really be reminded that we are not alone. We are all still here, even though we're in our houses. Even if we're alone in our homes, we are all still together. Hmm. If you have rocks in your neighborhood, you could do that. How about that? A viewer makes an astonishingly intelligent connection between my haircut and communism. It's in your feedback, and it's next. Amy writes in tonight, looks like Governor Polis and Kyle both got a haircut. Too professional for them to do it themselves. We are living in a communist country as we know it. Amy, I've talked about this before. My wife uses the Sunbeam Turbo Dog Clipper Kit. We do like a beagle on the sides, and then she switches out to like a Pomeranian guard to do the top. And Kia says, I feel better when I watch your show. That means a ton. There are good people who work very hard every day to try and make you feel better and more informed. I'll see you next time.